morning. Come right over where we can see each other and talk to each other. We are glad that you are here. You know that for sure. So I want all of you to think about your name. To think about your first name. To think about your second name, if you have a second name, your middle name. I want you to think about your name. See, my first name is John. I'm not sure why mom and dad named me that. John, maybe after one of the Gospels, John. But my middle name is Ronald. And I was named that because it was my dad's name, John Ronald Walker. So think about your name. Were you named after somebody that you know? Were you named because your mom and dad liked someone else or had a family member or a middle name? So I'm going to count to three, and I want all of you to say your first name. One, two, three. Kyson, I want you to stand up and tell everybody what they just said right here, right here. No, you couldn't, could you? But you know who does know your name? God. Now, do all of you know your middle name? Raise your hand if you do. What's your middle name? Joe? Elizabeth? Suzanne? Jeffrey? Lee? Charles? Okay. Two middle names. It's who? Clark? That's all right. You got one of the two. Your middle names? Elizabeth. Grace. Kate. What is it? Okay, that's all right. We'll come back. Your middle name? Alexander? Hayes. Marie? Stephen? Wayne? Okay. And that's it. That's your middle names. What is your first name? And your middle name? Parker. Yeah, Parker's a good name. That might be your first name too. Yeah. Guess what? Today is the Sunday of Jesus' baptism. And you know when Pastor John stands here, he always wants to throw water on you. I won't do that today. I won't do that today. At least I don't think I will. But you know what? These are name tags. Now if I usually give you a name tag, what name are you going to put on there? Your name, right? Your name. So all these name tags would be different. But every single name tag's the same. What's it say? What's it say? Child of God. What's that say? Child of God. What's that say? Child of God. For all of you, whether you're John Ronald Walker or any of your names, you are a child of God. So I'm going to give you this name tag. Hold on to it or stick it on yet today because that's what we share in common. All of you have different lives. You do. Some of you go to the same school. Some of you are in the same grade. Some of you play in play groups. Some of you do dance, music, baseball, softball, whatever it is. But all of you have different lives. But all of you, even though you have different names, all of you have this same name because in the waters of baptism, I think I'm going to break my promise. In the waters of baptism. And I'm only doing this because in the waters of baptism, God named you what? And because he's Pastor Chip's son. <laughs> no. And Gavin, God named you what? Child of God, not just Gavin, each and all of you. And so to be fair, child of God, all of us. Guess what? All these folks too. Now I can't reach the back rows. Just kidding. No. So, stand right up. I'll give you each a name tag and then we'll share a prayer together. Make sure you get a name tag, even though they stay the same. Help pass them around. Everybody get a name tag. Share that with somebody. Share that with somebody. Share those with somebody. There you go. Everybody got one? Thank you. Everybody got one? No. Nope. Okay. What do they say? Right. Okay, so let's pray together. Hello, God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for making us a child of God. We love you, God. Amen. As children of God, as childs of God, we head off for Sunday school and all of that together. We rejoice that you're here. Sing my
the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, such curse as lost his grip on me. Grace and mercy and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior who is not just the Christmas Christ, but today is the baptized Christ. Amen. We've all seen them. We've been in big malls in the cities. There are these big boards that show the shapes of the shops and list their names, where the restrooms are, the escalators are, the food court is. And on those big directories, there's always a big X. And under that X, it says, you are here. You are here. If you were like me when you were a little boy or a little girl, I always want to know, well, how do they know I'm here? How can they tell me I'm here? Well, then you grow up and realize you have to be here to read the X. To read the X. They're there so you can find your way. They're there so you know where you are. X marks the spot. This is where you are. Here are the stores, and you can find your way. I was just drinking coffee since Carol's here. I want to make sure she knows I wasn't snitching anything. Fast food place, just drinking coffee. And I looked up, and two fire engines and a squad, they go by this place going this way. <laughs> About a minute and a half later, they go by the place going that way. And with no exaggeration, just a little while later, they actually cut through the parking lot. They were having trouble finding their way. If we're honest, that's what the baptismal story of Jesus wants to show Jesus and to show us. Baptism of Jesus wants to show Jesus the way. Wants to tell Jesus who Jesus is. Folks, in my generation, if they used to take catechism, used to have to take sermon notes. And you would sit there and try to find two or three things you could write down. This is what you would write down. If you're going to go home and say to someone, well, the baptism of Jesus, what's that all about? This is the message. For Jesus, you are here in the waters of baptism so you can find your way. We don't have a big directory X here. But we have a text that tells us that story. The gospel story shows us where Jesus is in the waters of baptism so he can find his way. And it shows us who Jesus is, the Messiah, the very presence of the Messiah. Where are we? We are in the presence of God. It's the only reason you're here. We are in the presence not just of a baby in a manger, not just the Christmas Christ, but the anointed one of God, the very Son of God. It's the only reason we come to church. This is where we are in the Jordan River with John the baptizer. When Jesus is baptized, and what we see is that this Christmas Christ becomes the Son of God. Matthew, Mark, and Luke all tell the story. A little different emphasis in each, but the basics are there for all of us. It's really a story I could say to any of you, tell me the story, and you would get most of the parts. We have Matthew's version, but through all three combinations, it's this. He comes to John to be baptized, and John says, whoa, I'm not even worthy to do this. I shouldn't be doing this. 
But Jesus convinces him. And in the waters of baptism, as Jesus is baptized, the heavens opened. And the Spirit of God descends in the form of a dove and lights on Jesus. And a voice comes from heaven. This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. And we move from Christmas and the baby in a manger to the Son of God to the Messiah. The baptism of Jesus wants you to know what's going on. This is Jesus the Christ. All three Gospels tell it. So every year we have the baptism. Every year there's really no way to recreate the message. It's just to say we believe in the Son of God, the Messiah, the Anointed One, the one who was promised in the Old Testament and comes to fulfillment in the Christmas Christ and now the baptized Jesus. This is who Jesus is, and the baptism shows us his way. We know what his way is. We know what his way is. It's not that many weeks, honestly, till that first week of April, and there we arrive at the cross, a cross of nails, a cross of crucifixion. So the way of Jesus, our Christ, is the way of the cross. That's why with Christian churches, no matter where you go, they all have crosses, or at least they should. We have a cross right here in the altar. We have a cross up there on the wall. We have a cross right there on the wall. We have a cross on the outside of that wall. We have a cross in the front of the church sanctuary. We have a cross in the atrium. We have crosses on our altars. And at the very top of our church, at the top of the steeple, we have a cross. Not because they look cool. Not just because that's what people wear. Not because of architecture. But because they make clear who the Christ is. The Messiah, Son of God, is. One who lived and serves and suffers and die. So the baptism already is a baptism into his death. And it makes clear for us. The Sundays of January and February, and I think churches in the north have a little advantage because it's Epiphany, the season of light, and we're usually pretty dark, or at least dreary and overcast, the season of light. And the stories that we share in Epiphany make real that Jesus is really the Son of God, the Messiah, beginning with this baptism. One of the stories usually is water into wine. You know how that goes from John's Gospel, water into wine. They're running short of wine. And someone who knows Mary, and Mary's the mother of Jesus, goes to Mary and says, they're running short of wine. Can you ask your son to help? And Mary goes and says, they're running short of wine. And Jesus says to her a line that's repeated throughout the Gospel of John. My hour has not yet come. My hour has not yet come. Now you'll see that two, three, four places in the Gospel of John. And usually the temptation would be, what's that hour going to be? The hour of resurrection, the hour of power, the hour of Jesus defeating death. But in John's Gospel, the hour is the hour of the cross, the hour of crucifixion. John's hour is the hour that Jesus is baptized into. He shows us the way, and it's the way of the cross. Everybody doesn't want that way. I mean, think about it. There's all kinds of other ways, all kinds of other attractions, all kinds of other things that want to grab a hold of your life. There just are. A great many of those have to do with money. A great many of those have to do with pleasure, entertainment, gadgets, gizmos. A great many of those have to do with work. Work, which is a good thing. A great many of those want to control your life, own your life. It can actually lead to this is what my life is built on. This is what my life should be about. Today's text makes crystal clear, no. This is what our life's about. Probably most everybody in the room has been baptized. Sometimes we think it's just something that religious institutions do. It's being baptized into a way of life marked with the cross. Marked with the cross. Sealed by the power of the Holy Spirit to walk the way that Jesus walked from his baptism to go the way of the cross. So we gather always with the cross. With the cross. We gather always as people of the cross. That's the way we choose because that's the way God's baptism chose. We follow the one who says, I am the way and the truth and the life. We do by following the one that scripture says is the Messiah. It's one who serves, suffers, and dies, and who loses his life for our sakes. And we're baptized into that same mission. We share that same cross 
that same distinguishing mark. We're all so very different. I mean, we look very much alike. And we may feel our lives are very, very, very similar. But we are so very different in our lives. Not just throughout the week, but who we are, where we come from, what we are ahead and what we do. All of that stuff, we are so different, except we share this one distinguishing mark. It's like when you meet someone and you haven't even met them before, but you look at their chin or their forehead or the way they carry themselves and you know they're part of a certain family. They got that distinguishing mark. You must be a Smith or a Brown or a Walker or a Johnson. We share a distinguishing mark. The cross of Christ, signed and sealed, part of a family, Christ's family, just like that same name tag. All of us could put that on. We are all children of God. Baptism sets us apart. And here's the good news. That mark is a markup. Now, January day, as you go into any store, what are they having? Markdowns. I went into a store yesterday. They said 95% off. I bought 15 things. I don't even know what they were, but 95% off. Our mark, though, is a mark up. A mark up. We're not a discount. We're not a bargain. We're not a clearance item. We're not really marked to say we're not worth that much. We are worth the life of Jesus Christ. We have a life and a power and a purpose and a promise. Go to any antique place. Centerville's loaded with them. And walk in and if, if you're debating whether to buy something, usually the salesperson will come up and they'll turn upside down and say, oh, this is signed. This is signed. That really makes it worth more. We are signed and sealed in the name and cross of Jesus Christ. We are signed and sealed. Now granted, sometimes we miss the mark. Actually, that's the most basic definition of sin. To miss the mark. To just be off the mark. In the Greek, if you take it seriously, that's all it is. Is that we miss it. We don't do it. We don't complete it. Sometimes we miss the mark, which means what? Sometimes we're not the people we should be. Sometimes we're not the people we want to be. Oftentimes we're not the people God would have us to be. And yet here we come with this baptism. Signed and sealed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Marked with the cross of Christ forever. Given the gift of forgiveness of sins. Forgiveness through the saving action of Jesus Christ. Now, my grandma grew up in a generation where Lutherans and Roman Catholics, oh, holy smokes, we can't be like Roman Catholics. They've got the water of baptism right at their door. People actually touch the water and mark their forehead. We can't do that. We've kind of grown into an understanding that while we share some different practices and things, we are the church of Jesus Christ, one body of Jesus Christ. I'm really one that every single morning when you wash your face... You ought to just take some water and remind yourself that you're a baptized child of God. May not make your day go perfectly. May not make it go any better than it would without it. But what it will remind you is that you're God's child. Loved by God, forgiven by God, graced by God, valued by God. Valued by God. You're kingdom people. You know what that means? You're people with a promise People with a purpose, people who are forgiven and redeemed. Your people, you're a person with a promise, with a purpose, forgiven and redeemed. Probably in my 30 years here, I've told you this episode 10 different times. Before we came, we served in Bexley, Ohio. It's a suburb of Columbus, but a suburb that's surrounded by tons of other suburbs. Really all city. And a great many children that lived there really had never been on a farm or seen a farm. They knew some animals from pictures or maybe a school trip or to the zoo. So we had a living nativity one year and to kind of jazz up the manger and the scene, we brought in a couple sheep and a couple baby calves. The calves had these little markers in their ears like all calves do. What? Their identification tags. And we're standing out there, <laughs> one little guy ran up. Oh, oh! Oh, look at these baby calves. They're so new, they still have their price tags on them. <laughs> now, when you think about it, the distinguishing mark of the cross that we wear has a price tag. The price of Jesus Christ. Not just for these few minutes in worship, but for every minute of your life. It shows the price that Jesus paid and the price that we are worth. 
Today, Jesus is baptized. God really says, mark my words. Mark my words. This is the one, the Messiah. This is the way, the way of the cross. And we're baptized into that same promise. In the name of the one who is the way, the life, and the truth. In the name of the one who gives us power and purpose and a promise. Jesus the Christ. Jesus the Son of God. Jesus the Messiah. Jesus in whose name we live. Thanks be to God. Amen. Before we share the Lord's Prayer, please allow me to offer simply a prayer, lifting up Kathy's brother and several others, just really dealing with heartache and health concerns. Let us pray. Gracious God, absolutely we think of Kyle in that hospital in Indianapolis, dealing with pneumonia, dealing with ventilators, dealing with heart stress and we pray in thanksgiving for some words of encouragement through yesterday but we pray for his body to persevere and for healing and wholeness slowly to take hold of him we think of Kathy and Nancy and all of Kyle's family as they share that concern and gracious God in the same way we think of the family of Bill Beard in final days, really for a few days, in final hours. This is precious wife Anita and sons Rodney and Brian. Gather close. We pray for peace and comfort as that room is filled with your spirit of God for God's good timing. We pray for others who are going to have surgery this week. We pray for families for whom grief is real Janice Richardson on the death of her brother in these last couple of days. We pray for places where nature has simply wreaked havoc and lives are turned upside down and lives are lost. And we pray for places in the world where terror, injustice, whatever it is that just wreaks havoc. 
countless are the places that need our prayers for your concern, for your presence, for ways that we might help. And equally countless are prayers of thanksgiving for blessings that abound, for places we get to travel and enjoy, and for people of God that we love and like and people of God who fortunately love and like us back. We give all of our life in prayer to you. We ask that you hear our prayers in the name of Jesus, who teaches us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, ever and ever. Amen.